Guys, good morning. But I can't hear you people. I can't hear anyone of you.
Uh, okay, if you can hear me clearly, eh? um, I think we can share one or two things about our expectations on this unit. I don't know if you've done the same for some of the units, but I think the procedure, the method, or rather um, uh, the methodology is still the same. Eh? The, 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 the microphones, I can't hear you from your end, eh? but I've not muted anybody. So I should be able to hear your voices, which I can't hear. But from my end, I've not muted anybody. So for Thank mobile you. computing one, eh? yes, Steven. Uh, I think people have joined using the only list. And that's the problem, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, how many people are there? We are only having you and Washira. I think Peter Peter has a problem somewhere. Uh, let me see, Peter. Yeah, he's on. Can you can you hear me, Stephen? You've disappeared. Ooh. But it's okay. Eh? If if you can check um, what I've provided, total, I've given you the course outline. And uh, I've also given you uh, notes for topic one. Then uh, I've also um, prepared an attendance. So I'm expecting that I'll check your attendance for today for this unit. Yeah, so I think we can go back to what is expected of us in this unit. Just like uh, the normal learning, we'll be expected to, uh, to attend our class online. And uh, at the same time, we'll be expected to do those other other things that we, we normally do in normal classes, eh? the cuts, uh, the assignments, and blah, 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 blah. Like I had given you in the welcome note, eh? um, you'll be expected to at least engage yourself in some of those activities that I'll be providing. So if I give you a learning activity after a particular talk, I'll expect that you'll respond to it within the provided time, uh, time frame. So if I give you a week or a day to work on it, eh, I'll expect to see that feedback within the shortest time possible or within the, 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 the provided time limit. For the cards and uh, probably any other assignment that may, might need to take longer, I'll always be communicating via the portal. Okay. So what, what matters for, for us is attendance and um, uh, participating in whatever is, is, is required of you. So I don't know, um, I believe you have done some data communication units and uh, that's what is going to provide us with a basis for this unit of which we'll be expected to understand more uh, on what happens when devices communicate wirelessly or when devices use mobile technology to, to communicate. So we'll be expected to borrow some leaves from what you people did in data communication. communication I don't know which, which unit you've done. So for mobile communication eh, or mobile computing, we'll, we are basically interested in looking at um, how our devices are able to link each other or maybe how devices are able to connect to each other so that they can be able to share voice and at the same time also share, share data. So what, what we'll be looking at here, all, what we'll be interested in here eh, will be um the mobile devices and the wireless technologies what are their characteristics how do they behave when they are communicating and uh, at the end of the day how is communication effect we have mobile communication and we also have wireless communication but they go hand in hand so we cannot talk of mobile without wireless and we cannot talk about wireless without without mobile so we shall be using the, the terms interchangeably okay? so you will go through the notes what i've provided see uh, uh, what is available i think for the first topic it's just general introduction i've just given a general introduction into networking um i have some um, multiplexing something on switching so you can just go through the notes in case you'll be having any problems you can always communicate okay steven you're back yeah yeah but uh, you're, you're on and off uh, not but you can hear me eh? yeah yeah 
Okay, let me let me share my camera. Let me share my camera with you. I don't know what, what the problem with the network is, but I can share the the camera. Just a minute. Mm -hmm. Is it your network that has the problem? Steven. Okay, I can see that uh, I'm, I'm getting an error message. I'm getting an error message from uh, the webcam settings telling me that uh, it is not allowed by the user agent. So we can just chat. There's no big deal. We can we can just chat or you can you can text me. You can send message. Okay. So don't mind so much about the camera. It uh, just waste our time over nothing. Now, um, I think you're the same group that I'm also teaching advanced mobile, eh? not advanced mobile, advanced database, of which we, we were to, to meet, I think, on Tuesday morning. But I hope you got my communication. I shared something via the portal. So I hope we're able to work together in both units as expected. So I'm, I'm, I'm not expecting any challenges from both ends, but you can always communicate in case of any challenges. Eh? Now let's come back to our business. <clears throat> mobile computing. And I've said that a mobile computing will always go hand in hand with uh, wireless communication. So where does the difference come in? There might be a difference between mobile computing and wireless communication. But like I said, they go hand in hand. They work hand in hand. So when you talk of mobile computing, eh, we are referring to um, using devices or maybe applying devices while on the, while you're mobile, while you're moving. So I'm making a call eh, or I'm, I'm texting somebody, but I'm on the go. I'm not stationary. But when it comes to wireless, eh, for wireless, I can be both mobile at the same time I'm stationed somewhere. I can be stationary at the same time I'm mobile. So for, for wireless communication, eh, we, we can give examples of, um, uh, for example, a computer lab. A computer lab where we have computers interconnected. And those computers are able to access the internet. If they're able to access the internet, eh, they are not mobile. They're in that lab, in that computer lab. So they're not moving they are not moving, so they are stationary, but they are still working using wireless technologies. But remember we've said that um, uh, mobile computing and wireless computing eh, or wireless communication eh, go hand in hand. So you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're on the go, if you're using a mobile device while on the go, you still be using wireless technologies. But if you're using a wireless technology, eh, it is not a must that you be mobile. But for you to participate in mobile communication you must use wireless technology so like i said the two will always uh, maybe be used inter interchangeably, interchangeably but there is a very thin margin in between the two the two terms so we, we, we will be looking at um um or maybe in in the first chapter eh, i've talked about uh the devices or maybe the components that can be integrated in a network for any given communication system, there must be a network. There must be an interconnection of various components. So I've given a number of components that can be integrated in a in a in a in a, in a network, including a server, including uh, some processors like the hub, the switch, um, the bridges, and what they do. What basically they do in a in a network. That's just the introductory part. But maybe we can focus more on. Uh, some later content on same chapter. Eh? Forget about the components. Everything. Those are things that uh, we can just run uh, run through and be able to understand. But then there is something I've talked about called switching in mobile computing. So what is this switching? What is switching? 
it is not the electricity switching on and off eh? but switching is a technique that is used by um, uh, mobile devices or used in mobile computing to facilitate the movement of a signal from a sender to a receiver so if if, if i'm sending you a message eh, or maybe i'm sending you a voice signal the voice signal must always go through some switching some switching techniques or maybe it, it should go it should use some switching techniques it must be switched from one point two to the other so what normally happens is that um there is a technique called switching i mean circuit switching circuit i, I don't know how you pronounce it eh? maybe you call it circuit but i pronounce it as, as circuit switching so if, if you are doing circuit switching or using circuit switching eh, we are expecting that the two devices that are connecting to each other or communicating using wireless technology are able to use a predefined route or they're able to use a predetermined path for them to to communicate so i'm sending you a message if if you're using the the safaricom network here eh, we are expecting that um, a safaricom as a service provider has given us a channel or maybe i can call it a frequency through which my signal travel through to get to your to your device so what happens is that um when my, my device is sending you a text message or maybe a voice signal safaricom must be able to determine which is the best route which is the best channel that this signal can go through to reach the the recipient so once that frequency is identified once that path is identified then i can be allowed to or my device can be allowed to send a signal to to your device so we are calling that circuit switching there is a predefined a predefined path that two devices can be able to use to communicate then number two we have what we call packet switching packet switching especially for data when i'm sending you a text message the best switching technique to use is packet switching so when we are using packet switching technique eh, um, my device if it is the one sending you a text message my device is going to uh, to send the um, uh, the message through various channels there will be so many channels that can be applied or maybe can be used so what my device will do eh, is that it will be able to break down that message that i'm sending you into small small packets into small chunks into small portions then it will send each of these small portion eh, through a different channel whichever channel that will be available whatever channels that will be available so safaricom eh, will tell my device that you can send to device b via this channel this channel and this this channel so the the, the packets will be sent through those available channels it's like they'll be scattered to multiple routes then when they get to your device they'll be reassembled back into that original message that i had generated so once they are assembled back eh, you'll be able to receive that message as i had i had said so that's what we call circuit so for circuit switching there is no predefined path the path will be allowed to a device when a device wants to send once it wants to send something so that's what happens when it comes to switching there is also what we call message switching eh? although message switching is not that currently in use in um, um, communication but what happens in message switching eh, is that um, it works in a similar way as packet switching but the difference is that for message switching uh, once a message is sent and it's to a particular link or maybe it gets to um, a device like a hub or maybe a device like a switch it will it will be held permanently it will be stored that packet will be stored permanently then when another link becomes available remember this is a network eh? and you're having so many devices interconnected so once it gets to that link it will be held permanently then once once an available other link becomes available it will now be sent from the first link to the second link for it to get to to where you are or maybe to get to your device okay so it works similarly to a uh, packet switching but it's not that much used because it, it it takes time if a device is going i mean if if, if um, a signal is going to be held somewhere and for the availability of, of, of a channel then it, it, it poses a challenge to communication 
So what happens is that um, the, the, the techniques that are most preferred are circuit switching and packet, packet switching. I don't know if you, you, you're able to get uh, your microphone on eh? so that I can, I can at least be able to hear you. I want to know whether we are together. I might be talking to myself from this other end. Okay, uh, since it's only Steven who is around there, and uh, who is uh, kind of active, eh? um, from the notes that I have provided, eh? I hope you can see the, the, the presentation. Steven, I hope can, you can see the presentation. I'm just um, uh, through the slides because I want to I want to I want us to see what is switching that you're talking about. Yeah, here we are. So this where we I mean this is what we are talking about, eh? The switching techniques. So for for the for this first diagram, eh, I hope you can be able. Let me zoom it a little bit. Yeah, it's now. We can just put it on full screen. Eh? Uh, if if you can still hear me, uh, Stephen, eh? now this diagram here is giving us. Um, a circuit switching network so if, if you can we can go through that um, that diagram eh? you can you can see the um, the nodes or you can see the um, uh, the nodes and the network stations then the nodes being indicated by the um, by the circles and uh, the network stations being indicated by the uh, by the by the square shapes so when you talk of a network station eh, that network station is like the device that is that is uh, um, uh, intending to send a message or a device, a, a mobile communication device connected to, to a network. Then between these uh, mobile devices, uh, we have so many nodes. Nodes are like um, uh, the link. They're like uh, those stations inside that network that are facilitating communication between the, the various mobile, mobile stations or maybe the mobile devices. So what happens here is that in circuit switching, eh, we can take example of B communicating to to e so if b wants to send a message to e eh, what happens here is that b to e there must be a dedicated route there must be a dedicated path for so this case of ours eh, if you can see the uh, the key down there we're having dedicated a dedicated connection 
and for for this example we are having a connecting to to e so if a is to connect to e eh, there must be a path through four five six to e so that must be there it must be ready. it must be available if a wants to communicate to to e and that's what you are calling the dedicated path the dedicated uh, connection so if there is anything to happen between a and e there is some some route to rely on that is already available but then when it comes to when it comes to the second technique eh, that we are calling uh let's go to the next slide <clears throat> packet switching eh? for packet switching what you're saying here is that uh, there is no dedicated path per se but in as much as no dedicated path eh, that doesn't mean that devices cannot communicate so if for for a case we can go back to our early example b wants to send something to to e at the end of the day eh, whatever b wants to send to e can go through as many available channels as as possible so for for this example of ours eh, see that b wants to send a packet to to e and this packet like i had mentioned eh, has to be fragmented it has to be broken down into 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 multiple or into smaller packets so what b is sending eh, is a b and and c or we can say that this is an entire message an entire data uh, data signal that b wants to to send but this data is broken down into three small chunks three small packets then for them to be sent to eh, they're being they're being sent through um i think uh, how many channels two different channels is communicating to e via the root 1 2 3 6 2 6 to just a minute so it will be sent through 1 2 3 6 2 to e and that will be uh, packet a b that will be uh, that, that small chunk a a b then for packet c eh, it will be sent through 1 4 uh seven six two to e so that's what you're calling packet packet using multi channels to uh to send a given signal a given data signal to uh to multiple i mean to, to a user through multiple uh multiple channels so that's what happens in in switching so switching is just a technique of moving signals from one point to to another i hope you are together to that point steven Okay, I can see Peter is trying to connect. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. You are lost. Yeah, I was lost. Oh, you went for breakfast. You went yeah. for breakfast. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hey, Peter, you have disappeared again. Okay, so Stephen, if you're okay, eh? oh, you're back. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, potea, potea. Uda pika chai. Apana. Mm. Yeah. So how much have you been able to to listen to? Because I've been talking to I think only Steven. I don't know whether Washira is listening. I can't hear him. I can't see any anything from his end. I was there until uh, switching packet switching. You you've uh, you've had whatever we've talked about. Eh? I don't know if yeah, any one of you has got questions. Are you able to view the presentation? I'm able. Pardon? I'm able to view the presentation. Mm -hmm. And you're saying you've not understood. There's something you've not understood. Yeah, I've not uh, heard you explaining the presentation. Now, I was just, uh, uh, we talked about the, the, um, 
uh, the introductory part on uh, the components, but I didn't dwell so much on it. I just uh, went to packet switching because there's a lot on this chapter that we need to uh, to cover. Eh? Now, you're saying you didn't understand what I said about uh, packet switching or maybe gen the yeah. general switching technique. Packet switching. Packet switching, eh? Whatever I was trying to demonstrate here. Yeah, yeah. What I was trying to demonstrate here was that um, in, in, in packet switching, eh, we are saying that um, if a signal is to be sent from a mobile device, a particular mobile device to another, that signal will have to be trans, uh, transmitted through multiple channels. So um, uh, uh, we, we are not expecting that within the network there is a dedicated path, a, a, a dedicated path for the two devices to communicate. But what the service provider will do, eh, uh, I, I think we'll talk more about what normally happens behind the scenes. But let's just talk generally currently because you, you're just introducing the unit. Eh? So what normally happens is that um, if, if I'm sending something to you, for example, Peter, eh, um, yeah. my signal, my data signal will be transmitted to you through various channels, various communication links, or maybe I can call them various frequencies. So there is no one path, there's no one dedicated path for, for communication between me and you. Which means that if you're using Safaricom as our service provider, Safaricom will wait until I want to send something to you. Then that's the time it will provide me with the various available chats. But if you're using circuit switching, for circuit, circuit switching, there will be a, a route, there will be like a highway that has been provided for us. It is there. It is there, and what normally happens, if I can just um, maybe um, just mention it, eh? when when your device is your mobile device for that purpose, maybe I can I can talk about the the, um, the the cellular phones. When your cellular phone is on, when it is up and active, it normally identifies the various available frequencies or the various channels that could be available. Then when it wants to send something, it will use what it had monitoring so it, it will identify the channels that are available then it will stock one it will pick on one frequency and monitor it so when it wants to send something eh, it will use that frequency that it had been monitoring so that frequency that it had been monitoring eh, is what we are calling circuit switching technique there is a dedicated path it knows that i want to communicate to this device via this this path and therefore that must be provided in the in the network but for packet, packet switching the, the the device will have to be allocated the the, um, uh, the routes i don't know if you people did routing eh? but routing is just um like a mechanism of transmitting a signal through airwaves from one device to to another and for routing to take place eh, there must be those frequencies available those frequencies or maybe you can call them channels they must be available so for packet switching eh, whatever routes that could be available whatever frequencies that could be available will be used by for example eh, um uh this station b it will be used by b to connect to to e so like i had said b will use two routes and those are the routes that are available in that network so that's what happens in packaging okay unless somebody else has got a question you can chat if if you can't use your microphone get questions from you no no peter are you okay yeah i'm okay yeah i'm okay for the rest that i can't hear your voices uh, probably you can chat me on uh, any questions that you could be Any questions? Raise your questions. Washira, any questions? You people are busy taking tea. <laughs> no, no, I'm here. No, no, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, no questions. 
for, for now, I have no question. For, for now, just for now. Okay. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, so like I had noted earlier, we have uh, the notes available for you. Uh, we have the notes, uh, we have uh, the switching subject. Um, we also have uh, this topic on uh, multiplexing. Eh? Maybe we can, we can discuss it briefly. Uh, for multiplexing, eh? <clears throat> how, how it comes about in a mobile computing environment, is that um remember there you know, there, there are usually so many people in a particular intending to to communicate we want to share something and we are so many of us that doesn't mean eh, that within that network each one of us be given a path a frequency to communicate to a second party so if for example you have a million people who want to communicate to a million other people that doesn't mean that we need a million channels for these people to communicate but we can use the least number of parts eh? the least amount of channels to allow this a million people communicate to the million million people so what normally happens in flexing eh? it's a technique that is used to combine signals multiplexing is a, is a technique used to combine to combine signals in the sense that eh, these a million people intending to uh, to communicate there are million people intending to in, intending to communicate can use for example 200 only 200 channels for them to communicate so it means that the 100 uh, signals from the 100 users will be combined they'll be combined into batches to form or maybe to to use only only 200 200 channels so we, uh, at the end of the day what what normally happens here is that um can have uh let's say um 500 people or maybe that's on the higher end eh? maybe we can, we can have 200 users being allowed to use one path being allowed to use only one one route and if, if you can see that uh, diagram on multiplexing eh, it, it's really explaining what happened here. so we are having as many computers as many users as possible on the left all these people want to to communicate to these other people on this end so these three people these three users eh, can use a single path they can use a single path to have their signals delivered to to the recipients the respective recipients so we are saying that their signals eh, will need to be multiplexed they'll need to be combined to be put th together using a multiplexer so a multiplexer is a device that puts signals together then the multiplexed signal eh, will just be transmitted via one route via one frequency so we don't need the a million frequencies you only need or you don't need the three frequencies for for, for our case we don't need three we only need one frequency. so that one frequency will be used to send the signals once they get to the recipient i mean to, to the recipient or maybe the receiving end they will be demultiplexed so in, in this diagram of ours a dm simply means demultiplexer mu means multiplexer so the signal eh, that has been multiplexed will be demultiplexed to demultiplex is like to separate that signal into its respective smaller components or constants so it will be the the, the, the signal will be broken down then sent directly to uh to the to, to the intended recipients so that's what happens in in multiplexing so there are different techniques that are again are used in uh, multiplexing including what you're calling frequency division multiplexing and we also have what we call time division uh time division multiplexing what happens in division multiplexing like that word suggests frequency division frequency division simply means that um multiple signals can be combined and be allowed to use one frequency so if, if uh, for example the frequency is 100 uh, megahertz eh, all of them will be sent via 100 megahertz i don't know um you people use set uh, set top boxes for receiving tv channels we can look at that set of box eh, as an example of what happens in frequency division so that set of box eh, will receive any channels as as possible I normally see them indicating uh, i don't know 70 what channels received whatever channels received so they have been put together they have been received as one big 
big channel. But if you want to for example, in NTV, it must be demultiplexed from the set of box. If you want to, we, to, to view another TV channel, again, it must be it must be separated from what has been received. So they, they were all sent via via a particular um, a set of box or maybe via a, a, a particular route. Then when it comes to receiving them, they will be separated. Because remember, they, have, they had been combined. So they'll be separated to allow each each recipient to receive what he or she uh, intended or maybe was supposed to have to have received. So in frequency, like you, you can see in that diagram, eh, we are having multi channels that have been combined. They have been combined, but they are separated by what you're calling a guard band. A guard band is 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 um is a is like a space between the two channels that allows the two channels not to collide, not to interfere with each other. It only protects, or maybe it is used for protecting the channel so that they don't mix up. There is something we call um, a crosstalk when it comes to communication. So if you're having two channels sending signals eh, and they're not separated, they're not guarded, then they might end up interfering with each other. So they'll, they'll, they'll like generate some noise that will interfere with the other channels. So the guard band is there to at least reduce crosstalk as much as, as possible. So that's what, it, what happens in frequency division. So the, 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 the multiple channels will be combined and there will be, I mean, the, the, the various um, uh, signals will be combined and be allowed to, uh, to share a particular frequency. Okay. But then when it comes to uh, the second technique, eh, that is uh, what we are calling um, time division multiplexing. From that diagram, if, if you can see it, uh, let me enlarge it a little bit. Eh. For time division multiplexing, eh, if you can uh, see it, we, we are having again the three computers that want to to communicate and whatever they want to send, the signals they want to send will be multiplexed. Then when it comes to, um, uh, to sending signals, eh, they will be sent via a particular time that has been, has been provided. So, for example, computer one eh, will be told, send what you want to send during this particular time. Number two or computer two will be told, eh, send what you want to send at this particular particular time. So in as much as they will be multiplexed, eh, but whatever whatever they, 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 they want to send will be allocated some time slots. They will be allocated time, time slots. So if, if you can see that diagram of ours, eh, we are having um, the three, the three signals from the three computers, C, B, and A, or maybe we can just say A, B, and, and C. But for the first case, eh, we are seeing that the three signals are being allowed to to be sent at that particular time slot. We can we can assume that probably that is at eight thirty. So they have been allowed to send whatever they want to send at at thirty. Then during the second time slot, eh, it is only C and A that can be sent. They are combined and can they are the only ones that can be sent during the available the next available time slot. Then during the third time slot. It is the third that I mean it is uh, the uh, the two signals C and A that can can be allowed to go through uh, through the channel at that particular time. So what normally happens is that the devices can send, but they must be allocated some time slots for for each to send. So when when your time comes, send. When your time comes, send. So that's what happens in time division multiplexing. So multiplexing that's how it happens in. Um, in uh, mobile computing, that's how devices are allowed to, to send data through multiplexing. So like I had said, you don't need so many channels for devices to be able to, to send or receive what they want. We can have the fewest amount of channels, but many devices can be allowed to use the few available channels to communicate. So that's what happens in multiplexing. Unless we've got any question, you can chat if you've got questions. Any questions, Stephen? Ashira, if you can hear me, do you have any questions? And uh, Peter? Yeah, just a clarification. Mm -hmm. In time division multiplexing, mm -hmm. 
what do you, what do you mean is that um the, the frequencies are allocated different times not not the frequencies eh? uh -huh. um what what normal if if i'm communicating to you eh? remember i'm uh -huh. communicating uh, via a particular frequency okay are we together i'm communicating yeah, yeah. to you via via a particular frequency and that frequency that i'm using to communicate to you eh, can be shared mm -hmm. by other other people which means that mm -hmm. um if if uh, we are we are having four people for example communicating eh, they they'll use this yeah. same frequency that i'm using to communicate to to you but the first person as that first person is me eh, i'll be given my mm -hmm. time to send what i want to send to you are we together the number yeah. two eh, will now again be given his time to use the same frequency to communicate to somebody else then somebody else number three eh, will again be allowed to use the same frequency at a particular time so our times have been or maybe uh, uh, we are given time different time slots that at 8 30 miriam can send to peter at 9 45 eh, washira can send to peter or somebody else at um, 9 50 steven can be allowed to send to somebody else but using the same frequency peter so, okay. I hope Stephen, you 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 are back because I'm saying you got lost. If you have any questions, you're back. We are we are we are good. Eh? Okay. Anybody else with uh, with uh, with uh, any other question? Any other question? <laughs> Any other question? I'm waiting for your questions. We are good. Okay, Stephen, from your question, I still have a question. Eh? I'm multiplexing each device is at a specific time to send. But what, what I would insist is that each will be allocated its time slot, eh? its specific time slot, eh? but through the same, the same frequency. So I hope that answers your question. If, if you can look at that diagram, eh, they're using the same frequency, but each is having its own time to, its own time to send. Uh, what probably I can add on this eh, is that uh, if, uh, for example, I'm sending you a text message, that text message will not be sent, um, all of it, the entire text message in one go. But like I had noted earlier, eh, it will be sent in small chunks. So during the first allocated time slot, eh, that is in time division multiplexing, eh, during the first allocated time slot, I'll be allowed to send a portion, a portion of what I want to communicate to you. Then when I'm if, if you can look at that diagram, that's what has been indicated. When I'm allocated an, a, a, another, another or maybe a second time slot, again, I'll send another portion of what I want to send. If I'm allocated another time slot, a third time slot, again, I'll send what? It's still part of this message that I want to to send until the entire until the entire um, uh, the entire message that I want to send to you is is sent. So I can send my 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 message in small chunks, but during the allocated time slots in the network. So each device will always have time to send. Will be given or will be told when to send. So send the first chunk. This time send the second chunk this time send the chat the third chunk but this happens so fast such that as a, as a recipient you'll not notice that your messages are coming unless it is a very long message if, if you've if you've noticed with long messages they normally talk of updating message so it might take longer but for small messages uh, they'll just be broken down into small chunks then you're not able to notice 
that they're being sent in small in small chunks. That's what happens in networking behind the scenes. Any other question? Any other question? Washira, do you have any question if you are on? So I can assume everybody is good on uh, chapter one. The preceding uh, subtopics, nothing much. Eh? I, I only picked on these ones so that I can uh, explain in terms of what happens in, in, um, in mobile communication. For, for the prior topics, like I had mentioned, they're about topologies and the, 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 the components in a network. So I think this is something you can go through. There's nothing much about that. It was just a brief introduction into networking, including the components, the topologies, and types of networks. But uh, the other two topics that I've just dis discussed uh, what are a bit uh, technical at a higher level. So if there are no questions, can you call it a day today? Yes. Peter? Yes, we can call it a day. Ukonanja, vile kuna baridi? Eh, sijamaliza kunywa tai hata. Wao jamaliza not even taken tea. <laughs> I have to take care of you before I take care of myself. Let me hope next time we will be able to see each other because I don't know what is happening today. I'm trying mm -hmm. to connect and it's not. It's just giving me an error message. So next time we'll be able to see each other. We, we've never met. I don't, I don't know you people. Or probably we've met. Are you in day or... Uh, pardon? We met. We met some times ago. Are you in TRC? Hello? Are you in TRC or town, campus? TRC. Oh. Uh, so if you are in TRC, when I think I taught you that astrology. Yeah, yeah. You so we know each other. We don't need to see each other. Eh? You don't need to see this person talking behind the, behind the cameras or behind the computers. Maybe the rest want to see you. Now, Stephen is telling me we've met. Do you know Stephen? Yeah. Peter, do you know Stephen? Yeah, I know. Eh? Yeah. So that's good. That's good. Otherwise, Corona and Apeleka Ajay, Kule Muko. Well, I took an idea. Sasa, Akuna Kutembea. Akuna Kutoka. Go quarantine. You're in, you're in quarantine now, you call lockdown. Quarantine. You're in quarantine where? Yes. At home. 14 days, Paka the issue is talking. Same at home. I thought, I thought you were somewhere in a, in, a, in a station, a quarantine station. A self quarantine. It's okay. That's okay. You continue keeping safe. We'll meet for advanced database. I think it's on Tuesday. Yeah, we'll talk more. I think you, you are the same group, Sindo. Yeah, we're the same group. Yeah, to Tonga on Tuesday morning. So you stay Bye. safe. You have a good day.